But the most common question was, why would you join up? Which is rather astonishing. The only thing I can think of in response to that to tell them was that it was the right thing to do. Of course, we knew that Hitler had uh, uh, was, uh, what he was up to. So uh, everybody would say, hey, we got to stop this guy. Maybe it was a different time then. There was a sort of, uh, to me anyway, a kind of sense of duty that uh, if the country was at war, and they, and they wanted you to go, then, then you, uh, you know, you should go. My mother didn't want me to go because um, she says one son is enough. But I said, well, I'm going to go sooner or later, so I don't want anybody to do the fighting for me. I have a hard time talking about it even yet without getting a little emotional. I guess the most vivid memory was when I took the first bullet that was fired in one. It was an opportunity to prove that one could be the best at what you do. And one always wanted to measure up, that's it. They were young, with minds filled with adventure and bravery deep in their souls. They had to be stopped. We had no choice but to go to war. They didn't seem to understand that they were up against a different type of soldier. Who were these men? who would jump from an aircraft behind enemy lines. He shot Chappie with a, a rifle and uh, he didn't kill me, thank goodness. Drawn together by a cause, a brotherhood bound by blood, delivering victory from above. Leonardo da Vinci was not likely thinking death from above when he sketched the first crude concept drawing of a parachute in 1483. 300 years later, Benjamin Franklin visualized an infinite deal of mischief when he wrote, hypothetically, of soldiers dropping into combat behind enemy lines. The Russians experimented with airborne troop insertions into battlefield exercises between the First and Second World Wars. The Germans took notice and improved upon it. The German Fallschirmjager at the outset of World War II in Poland, Holland, Denmark, Norway, Belgium, and Crete were the first paratroops to prove the concept of vertical envelopment, ruthless commandos striking behind enemy lines at command and logistics facilities, their blitzkrieg demoralizing frontline enemy troops by eliminating the security of a safe rear area. The British and Americans saw the light and developed airborne troops in 1941. Canada decided to get on board in 42. Canada's original paratroopers were volunteers, Canadian soldiers already in England and others in Canada. Those in England began training in July 1942 at Ringway. Those in Canada went to train at Fort Benning in Georgia. And in the spring of 1943, training was moved to Camp Shiloh in Manitoba. With no further need for paratroops in Canada, the British Army was pleased to accept Canada's battalion in their 6th Airborne Division. On arrival in England, the battalion converted to the British style of parachuting without reserve parachutes. They jumped from towers, from balloons, and from a variety of aircraft modified to drop airborne infantry. The initial wave of volunteers, young men, fresh out of high school and in their early 20s. They put aside personal dreams and aspirations to enlist, but few volunteers would be accepted in the elite new airborne force. Only one in three volunteers made it through the initial screening. Another third were lost in basic training. The conditioning was physically intense. The battlefield skills acquired deadly aggressive. This first generation of Sky Commandos knew the high risks of being the first into combat. Landing behind enemy lines, outnumbered by the hostile forces around them, using tactics that were still largely unproved. Despite the deadly odds, there was no shortage of men who wanted to wear the maroon beret and silver paratroopers' wings. I was with the militia before the war for three years, I had been a trained machine gunner and uh, an NCO who was responsible for training other people. When I started out, I was in uh, the um, 
in a reconnaissance regiment and, and volunteered to, to go to the uh, airborne. I ran into two high school buddies of mine uh, from Toronto, who I knew quite well, and they filled me with uh, a lot of enthusiasm uh, for the battalion, for the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion, which had only arrived in England about three months before. Walking down the street in Toronto, I saw some paratroops. So I, oh, they look smart. That looks good to me. So I, I signed up for the paratroop. Why would you want to get into the parachute battalion? Well, it was, I guess the, the simplest thing to say is that it was an opportunity to prove that one could be the best at what you do. As a matter of fact, um, the battalion when it was formed was formed at Fort Benning and took exactly the same training as the Americans did. Canada didn't have any uh, airborne training school. When the tower and uh, the facilities at Shiloh were finally built and completed and training continued there, it was patterned after the American training. And we were there uh, for a few months and then uh, we went overseas. Well, the battalion first went over in 19, uh, July 1943, trained with the British, the 6th Airborne Division, the 3rd Brigade. We were put in the British 6th Airborne Division and uh, stationed in the Salisbury Plains around uh, Bulford. From there, uh, we are uh, retrained again. We went to uh, up to the uh, British Parachute Training School in Ringway. Uh, they used a slightly different method of jumping, and uh, we went through uh, the training there. Which was out of a balloon in England, and there was no reserve chute. And you drop 180 feet before the chute opens, and I know I was frozen and my jaw was clenched. I said, when the hell is this thing going to open? <laughs> In all, we had to do eight parachute jumps, three from a barrage balloon with a basket suspended beneath it. That was three jumps. And then you did five jumps uh, from an aircraft. They trained out of uh, re converted bombers, and they had a hole in the bottom of the plane, like uh, about three foot diameter. The, uh, the secret, well, it was like the balloon drop too. It was out of a round hole. And uh, if you didn't arch yourself and throw and clear your parachute from the edge of the hole as you went down, it, the parachute caught the edge of the hole, flipped you forward, and you rang the bell and busted your nose. So the, uh, the trick was to do it right, or otherwise you, there was a lot of broken noses. And I think only the last two jumps for qualification were done from the famous old Dakota C-47, which was a sheer pleasure to jump from. It was much easier, simpler, and better all around. I'd waited since 1939 to get into action, not wondering, you know, wondering really, I suppose, what my reaction would be in getting into battle for the first time. But of course, then there was the personal thought, am I going to be able to carry this off as I should? One Can Para has been honored with a monument in Wasaga Beach and a plaque in Etobicoke for Corporal Frederick George Topham, the battalion's only recipient of the Victoria Cross. Our sky troops, as the first generation paratroopers were described in the newsreel sent back to Canada, trained through the British winter and spring of 1944. On the evening of June 5th, the men of the Canadian Parachute Battalion boarded 50 aircraft and headed for France. Their first combat assignment, D-Day. The mission? A Company was to defend the flank of British paratroopers in attacking German artillery at Merville, France. B Company was to blow up two bridges on the river Dive, and C Company was to destroy a German headquarters and bridge and to neutralize German troops at Varaville. The British commander of the combined airborne force, Brigadier James Hill, remembered the Canadians as well-trained and highly motivated. He predicted the German defensive forces would be demoralized by his ferocious and bloodthirsty troops. But on that historic night, the Canadian paratroopers weren't sure just how many would land alive behind the beaches of Normandy, let alone how high a price would be paid to protect the massive Allied invasion that would launch the liberation of Europe. 